Hello there. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm like, I feel like Mr. Rogers sometimes when I open a video, like, welcome neighbor. It's so nice to see you here. Um, hi there. Welcome to, and that's where I, I trip up is when I say welcome because I'm not welcoming you into my home. It's a cyber home. So in this tutorial, it's going to be minimal talking, minimal teaching, because it's going to be a peaceful watercolor painting that anybody can watch or anybody can do. But we all need a little dose of peace and calm right now. We're filming this at the time of crazy uncertain times with the coronavirus and everything that's happening with the actual virus, but then also stuff's happening with our economy and small businesses are starting to freak out and lose business and all of that. And so... I thought what I needed today and maybe what you needed as well is just some something that's really therapeutic and something that's really calming and also something that we can all do indoors. So we also probably have our kids at home from school um, or our regular routine, routines are kind of thrown off. And so something that is really calming and also helps us learn something new is watercolor. And so I thought this would be a fun tutorial to do this week during all this craziness. But also if you're watching this later, on like in 2021 and all things have calmed down or whenever this calms down, then obviously this is something you can do now as well because watercolor is so therapeutic. And so we're gonna be painting a peaceful abstract watercolor painting today in some blue tones and some tones that just kind of <sighs> help us relax. So if you're ready, let's dive in. <laughs> All right, so in this video, I'm only gonna be using one brush. It's going to be my size six round brush from Heritage 4050, um, the series Heritage 4050 from Princeton. You guys know I love these brushes. They're of course linked below if you wanna check them out. But if you have a paintbrush that's on hand, any type and size of paintbrush will do. But again, if you want similar results to what I'm achieving with this video and this tutorial, then we have the links to all the supplies that I use all the time. So they'll be linked in the description, but I'm only gonna be using my size six round brush today and it's all going to be in blue tones and stuff that is really, really calming to look at. So we're gonna be doing some deep blues, some indigos, maybe a touch of peach for a little bit of contrast, um, but it's also just going to be basic swatches and strokes. Uh, this is definitely doable by any age and any experience level. We're gonna be painting <laughs> a piece that is very similar to this, just a bunch of colors kind of exploding and working together on a, on a piece of paper. Um, this is all mostly blues with some contrasting tones with peaches or orange um, and some taupey colors, some like yellow taupey colors. And it's all just basic strokes and swatches. It's really beautiful to look at and also really calming and beautiful while painting as well. So it's super mesmerizing to paint. Um, this type of piece. And we're gonna be using a lot of wet and wet painting. So if you don't know what wet and wet painting is and you wanna start there, we do have a video that will teach you everything you need to know about wet and wet painting. So we'll make sure to link that so you can check that video out and get up to speed with wet and wet while I am painting this piece. So to get started, I'm going to grab some water from my cool cup of water because I paint with two different cups. One cup's for cool colors, one cup's for warm colors to wash off the color in my cup. So blues, greens, yellows, reds, pinks, oranges, etc. And then from here, I'm gonna grab some Prussian blue and load up with a ton of it on my paintbrush. Um, you can start with whatever color you want to. I'm not, you know, this is a tutorial but it's not like you need to replicate exactly what I'm doing. This is mostly just going to be about the feeling of painting wet and wet and letting the color do the work for you. Um, and just seeing, seeing paint land on paper and colors kind of correspond and harmonize with each other. And so we're gonna be using subtle contrasting colors with uh, these blues. So we're gonna be doing peaches and like really subtle contrast. So instead of doing direct orange, with our blues, we're gonna be doing more like yellow orange or more pink orange instead of mid orange, which is equal parts red and yellow or pink and yellow. 
So I'm loading up with a lot of Prussian blue on my brush and all I'm gonna be doing for basically the entire piece is using a side hold or a slanted hold with my brush. So I'm gonna be about 35 degrees away from the paper or 45 degrees away from the paper um, instead of vertical hold like this because I wanna get, I want to use the entire belly of the brush um, for a wider stroke. And so in order to do that, um, I'm gonna be using a slanted hold. And then I'm also making sure that my pigment on my brush is wet because I want to see that mesmerizing and peaceful action between two areas of wet paint when they touch each other or kiss or rub shoulders, however you wanna uh, sign signal how it happens. Um, they kind of explode and create this burst or bloom of color. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that our pigment on our brush stay stays wet. So all I'm gonna do, I'm right-handed, so I always, in an abstract piece that's really dense like this, I always start in the top left-hand corner and work my way slowly down the piece of paper in a zigzag. But if you're left-handed, you might wanna start in the top right-hand corner. Um, but I'm gonna start in the top right-hand corner and just lay down a simple back and forth swatch. Um, doesn't need to look like anything specific, I'm just getting paint on the paper. So I'm just starting with a slanted hold and bringing my brush down and across the paper, up and down, just a few times. I might wet my brush and go back over that and make sure the swatch stays really, really wet. You can go bigger than that, you can go smaller than that, it's completely up to you, but as long as this edge right here stays wet, then I'm gonna move on and just start placing other swatches in areas of color right next to that and keep going across the paper. and I might create little strokes. This is Thalo Turquoise by Windsor Newton. It's super bright and amazing and I love it. So I'm just using a few different blue colors in my palette that I have in my palette. I have Prussian blue with a touch of black and then phthalo turquoise. And then this next blue I'm grabbing is cobalt blue, which is a more like royal blue color. Blue is a really peaceful color. Watch that bloom spread very mesmerizing to look at but blue is a very peaceful color it's a very calming color and i think just letting the brush do its work and then also the pigment do its work with these wet and wet moments is so calming for your mind maybe if you're stressed out for any reason whether it's during this time where you're watching this video as we're posting it during the coronavirus or something else is going on in your life. I think it's important to come back to these therapeutic practices with watercolor where we're just kind of letting our brain shut off for a moment, there's so much noise. So I'm not thinking about perfection or shape even. I'm just kind of letting the pigments and swatches dance around and changing up the direction of each, each swatch or in these little strokes that I'm doing. But now that I have a little clump here, I'm gonna start adding in some peach with Opera Rose, which is a pink color, instead of red, because I like that soft orange or blush tone that you can get from pink mixed with yellow instead of red mixed with yellow. So I've got Lemon Yellow Deep and Opera Rose being mixed up. 
for this pinky orange color that I'm going to just kind of add in here. And then maybe grab some more yellow for a couple other swatches. So it has the same tone, but it's just a different um, hue. Layering on top of some already dried areas of paint. Now we need to pull in some more of this dark blue. So as you can see, I'm just gradually working my way across the paper. I'm not jumping around too much so that I can work wet and wet a lot more. Even mixing turquoise and cobalt together for a slightly different hue. Bringing back some of that peach. Lightening some of the hues with water. Just be loose. I know it's hard to do if you're not used to painting like this, but just be loose and just kind of focus on your breath. I know that also sounds weird because we're painting, but focus on your breath and kind of Keep your head back as you're painting and your eyes back as you're painting so that you can focus on the piece as a whole and how color is landing. So if you kind of blur your eyes a little bit, you can see where there's areas where it feels like it's pulling the rest of the piece. Like for example, this bright pink is really pulling my eyes over here. So I want to continue to keep people's eyes bouncing in a zigzag across my piece. So I'm gonna notice that and I'm going to pull more of that bright pink down here. Even if it's not the exact same hue, that brightness is kind of alluding to it.
So now that I've reached the bottom of my paper, I'm just gonna kind of look at the sections, top and bottom of my piece, and see what I need to pull from both sides. So I need some more of this rich, pinky yellow color. Just doing these funky swatches. Without thinking. Just placing. <sighs> so there you have it. A very easy yet soothing and peaceful um, watercolor painting that pretty much anybody can do. I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of you who practice this are going to feel frazzled. You're going to be overthinking your next step or wonder if there's any method to this madness. And unfortunately, there's not. It is not math or science. Um, this is an exercise that hopefully helps you tap into that flow state. Um, that flow state is that place where we just kind of all zone out. It's like when you're driving on the freeway and you look up and you're like, I don't even remember driving past the last two exits. That is the flow state. And that's where I want you to tap into. I know this sounds kind of woo woo and weird, but art really helps you do that. It help, it's very therapeutic and it helps you to calm down your anxiety, the panic, the fear, the worry that you might have in whatever circumstance that you're in, not just what's relevant right now as we're recording this, which is coronavirus, but anything. We're all stressed out and busy and we all need some something that helps calm us down. And so this type of piece is helpful for that, but it's also really helpful for helping you practice staying loose, entering into that flow state and developing your muscle memory with brush strokes and um, learning and practicing more wet and wet techniques. Also, I'm going to give this piece away. So one lucky winter, winter, <laughs> winner will win this piece, obviously. Um, comment below with your stress-free activities, your favorite stress-free activities. Maybe it's playing music or meditating or calling a friend or a family member. List it below in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Otherwise, can't enter you into the giveaway. Comment below with your favorite stress-free activity and you'll be entered in to win this pretty little piece. And it's a worldwide giveaway. So uh, best of luck to you all. <laughs> See you in the next video.